So here we are at CERN, the home of the Large Hadron Collider, where scientists from all over the world are currently trying to analyse huge amounts of data to understand the very fundamentals of our universe. Now the International Particle Physics Outreach Group, or IPOG, have given high school students the opportunity to analyse these very data as part of the International Particle Physics Masterclasses. The masterclasses began in the UK around 10 years ago. Students typically spend an entire day at a local university learning about high energy physics and how to analyse data collected at experiments such as those at CERN. And the idea was to bring high school students between about 16 and 18 years old to universities and experience what it's like to be a physicist for a day and then try and take part in a, a, a small experiment, a small data analysis and discuss the results at the end of the day. And this proved to be a really good concept. Previously, participants were provided with data from the Large Electron-Positron Collider experiments, which ran in the same tunnel as the LHC until it was decommissioned in 2000. But this year, the students had the chance to analyse data from the LHC experiments. This is ALICE, ATLAS and CMS. So the students are provided with a subset of real CMS data in which to do the, their analysis. This is really neat because they're actually looking at data that's almost newly minted. It's, it's, it's less than a year old, right from the Large Hadron Collider. So what they're doing and what CMS is really doing is really quite complementary. Uh, so it gives the students a real idea of what's going on right now. The Masterclass Day begins with lectures for the students about particle physics and the experiments here at CERN. Then, after lunch, they start to analyse LHC data, performing exercises such as probing the inner structure of the proton or reconstructing the invariant mass of the Z boson. There are basically two slightly different exercises. One is reconstructing Z bosons, the decay of Z bosons, uh, and the other one is the decay of J psi particles. And uh, the decay type we've chosen to, to give them to look at is when they decay into either two muons or two electrons. What they're looking for are pairs of two, what we call global muons, which begin in the tracker and travel all the way through the muon chambers. And then uh, it's, uh, with, with some explanations, it's, it's, it's doable for, for these uh, young students to, to identify these events, classify them. And then uh, when they mark them in different classes and the mass of these particles, which is a property extracted from these, these two muons or two electrons, is calculated. Part of the exercise is not to learn necessarily how to do a physics analysis, but to learn some physics as you go along. Am besten hat mir eigentlich die Auswertung der wirklich Originaldaten gefallen. Also man hat wirklich einen Einblick bekommen, wie, was die Physiker jetzt wirklich machen und wie das Ganze funktioniert. Und das fand ich wirklich interessant, dass man da die Chance hatte, das wirklich mitzumachen. I think we want the students to look at data a little bit like physicists look at data and try really start to dig into it, try to understand it, be critical of it but also try to get as much as they can and uh, really learn from it. CERN doesn't just provide data for the students to analyse. As one of the Masterclass Institute, CERN also plays host to students from all around Geneva. On the 25th of March this year, around 40 students paid a visit to the CERN Marin site to work on data for the LHC's heavy iron specialist, Alice. Pour les étudiants, je pense que ça leur apporte déjà une... Parce qu'ils savent qu'au CERN, il y a beaucoup d'expérience, ils savent qu'il y a beaucoup de, de choses qui sont faites de recherche, mais ils ne savent pas exactement quoi. C'est-à-dire que dans le, le, les informations, on entend des choses, mais les élèves ne savent pas trop ce qui s'y fait. Donc déjà, ça permet de leur donner une réponse à ce niveau-là. Et, et ensuite, comme je disais tout à l'heure, bah, ça permet aussi de faire un lien avec ce qu'on fait en classe. C'est-à-dire qu'en classe, on travaille sur des formules, sur beaucoup de choses. Alors évidemment, on essaie d'apporter du sens à notre enseignement en donnant des exemples concrets. Ah ouais, je trouve que c'était vachement intéressant parce que on... déjà, ça reprenait un peu tout notre cours de physique et de chimie. Ouais. Bah, une ouais. journée, ça permet vraiment de se rendre compte euh, à, à, de ce qu'on y fait, etc. Mais après, je sais pas, de là à se lancer vraiment dans nos études. Euh... Donc peut-être que ça leur permettra d'être intéressés et de travailler dans la recherche, pourquoi pas au CERN. 
Today's particle physics endeavours are increasingly multinational, with video conferencing playing a major role in the discussion of ideas between physicists. Now, after the students have submitted their results, they then join students from institutes all over the world for a video conference, which is moderated at CERN by physicists at ATLAS, ATLAS and CMS. You go ahead. Hello. My name is Moritz. Whoops, I have to wave into the camera. It's not so easy. <laughs> ah, yeah, there, there. Hello. Hi, guys. Uh, hi. We will uh, start looking at the, the analysis and results we have been uh, working on during the day. And you can see that the mass is, uh, is nicely consistent with the, uh, with the PDG value of the, uh, of the mass of the JSI as well. So uh, that's, that's really a nice, clear signal. I think my favorite part is answering their questions. And sometimes they're really hard. Like somebody asked, um, why, do, why do spin one half particles obey the Pauli exclusion principle and spin one particles don't? It's a really hard question. So it's interesting to hear what they, the range of what you know, you're stimulating them to think about. They seem to find it both challenging and really rewarding as well, I think. I mean, the, the general impression I have is that they're, they're really quite uh, um, motivated and they're, they're really excited to be uh, you know talking to physicists based at CERN. So these video conferences is something which we in our daily life do every day multiple times so it's our life we're very familiar with it. Um, for them probably mostly in, in such an environment is where you have a larger group of people communicating through one interface, one video conference with a group of other people or several groups, probably a new experience. Was eben so schön ist, dass sie Menschen aus verschiedenen Ländern, verschiedener Herkunft trotzdem irgendwo auf einer gemeinsamen Basis finden, dass man die Physik als gemeinsame Basis hat, über die man diskutieren kann, über die man reden kann, weil man ein gemeinsames Interesse hat. Und das ist schon herrlich, wenn man dann mit solchen Menschen live reden kann und eigentlich weiß, die sind jetzt Tausende Kilometer irgendwas, irgendwo anders und man kann aber trotzdem mit denen reden. Und As I said, we do many video conferences. It's rarely do people cheer on the other side if you say something. Here they do. Very good. I think it's good that there are uh, things like this masterclass to show young interested people what is going on at CERN. To me, I think it's extremely important that we communicate uh, the research that we do uh, and communicate it to the general public, but most importantly of all, to communicate it to the next generation uh, of potential scientists. That, that's one of the most important jobs that we have. I would have loved something like this if I was a kid. I mean, I didn't know about the Tevatron or whatever until I was much older. So I thought that it would be a fun opportunity to explain to uh, high school students why, you know, what gets me out of bed in the morning, why I like coming to do this. Having the, 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 the possibility to, to connect to research in CERN as, as, a, as a young student, that is something which I myself uh, had the, the chance to do when I was in high school. In fact, at the time, I even I was able to come here with, with a school trip. And that is really what sparked my interest in high energy physics. So, so from our perspective, the, the best possible scenario is that these guys who are coming for these masterclasses become the next generation of particle physicists and maybe they go on to win Nobel Prizes and their interest was first sort of uh, flicked on a light bulb in their heads during these masterclasses. I hope it lowers the barriers between them and doing experimental particle physics and understanding more about the work that's being done at CERN and it makes them it makes it more real to them. I think it is important for them even if you know you want to be a writer or a doctor or something to have an appreciation for basic science and how it's done and how it's enriching our lives. My hope really would be that um, that a lot of people get in contact with science and high energy physics and then there will be some of them doing it for life maybe. Aber jetzt nach den Masterclasses hat, hat diese, die haben wirklich mein Interesse daran geweckt und ich finde es wirklich gut und interessiere mich jetzt auch mehr dafür. So, if you'd like to take part in the international masterclass activities, you can contact IPOG at physicsmasterclasses.org.
changed. <laughs>